Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. We also have Instagram and Twitter. You can find us at TPM Videos. Frontierland is one of the six themed lands at Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. It is here that we experience the story of our country's past. The color, romance, and drama of frontier America as it developed from wilderness trails to roads, riverboats, railroads, and civilization. The original Frontierland at Disneyland was born out of Walt Disney's love for America. And when Magic Kingdom opened in 1971, these same ideas were brought to Florida. The land takes you into the pioneering days of America in the early 19th century. This old western town is famously known for being home to popular attractions like Big Thunder Mountain and Splash Mountain. But there's so much more that makes Frontierland one of the best lands to just go and explore. It has so many secrets and hidden details you've probably never noticed. So today while looking at some history of the land, we're going to be counting down the top 7 hidden secrets in Frontierland at Magic Kingdom. Number 7. Frontierland is no secret, but have you ever realized that it's the only land that isn't accessible from the hub? When you're walking through the center of the park, Frontierland is really a hidden land. You need to travel through Adventureland or Liberty Square to get into this old western town. But why is that? Well, this was an intentional design by Imagineers and it all follows a story that starts in Liberty Square. See, the buildings in Liberty Square show the architectural progression through colonial America, starting in the 1700s. Since Frontierland is adjacent to Liberty Square, this architectural progression continues, showing the western expansion of America through the 1800s. The Diamond Horseshoe is the official transition point from colonial America into the Old West. And as you walk between the two lands, the transition is seamless. All the buildings in Frontierland are historically accurate, right down to the elevated sidewalks. Aside from the sidewalks on Main Street, Frontierland is the only land in Magic Kingdom that has raised sidewalks. Back in old western towns, the roadways were always really dirty, full of mud and dust, so raised wooden sidewalks were used to keep people's boots and dresses clean while they were walking through the town. And speaking of this town, at the top of some of the buildings in Frontierland, you'll notice a number. The number is actually significant and represents the year of that building's architectural design. So on Grizzly Hall, you'll see it's from 1898, Town Hall from 1867, and the Saloon from 1878. Number 6. If you look across the rivers of America, you'll see Harper's Mill on Tom Sawyer Island. This water wheel has sort of become an iconic part of the riverbank, adding even more kinetics to the rivers of America. Contrary to popular belief, Tom Sawyer Island was not an opening day attraction at Magic Kingdom. It opened in May of 1973, just over a year and a half after the park opened in October of 1971. Now the island is inspired by the characters and stories of Mark Twain's Tom Sawyer novels. If you're familiar with the characters from these books, there's a boy named Joe Harper who's one of Tom Sawyer's friends. If you board one of the rafts and head to the island, you'll see a sign right beside Harper's Mill that gives you its backstory. Tom Sawyer being the good friend he is named the grist mill after Joe Harper's father. So that's the Tom Sawyer story, but there's a double meaning to the naming of the mill. Disney actually named Harper's Mill after the late Imagineer Harper Goff. He was involved with designing Disneyland's Main Street and the Jungle Cruise, as well as the film 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. So Harper's Mill pays tribute to this late Imagineer, but it's also home to another hidden secret. Inside the mill, you'll see a series of wooden gears that are usually spinning. Here on this large gear, you'll spot a little blue bird in a nest. Well, in 1936, Disney released an animated short called The Old Mill. There was a scene in the film that shows a little blue bird on a wooden gear inside the mill. So Imagineers hit a little blue bird in Harper's Mill as a tribute to this classic Disney short. Number 5. 
Now, if you've watched past videos, you'll know we always point out details on the ground, since Disney is well known for creating theming that goes from top to bottom. Frontierland is home to the Country Bear Jamboree, where a cast of singing animatronic bears treat you to a musical review. When you enter the Grizzly Hall lobby, it gives you this warm, cozy feeling with the hardwood floors and the pictures of the cast of bears on the wall. Well, if you look down at the hardwood floors, they seem to be a little scuffed up. Since Grizzly Hall hosts the cast of bears, naturally they'd enter the hall, sharp nails and all, marking the hardwood floors with their claws. So Disney added the claw marks to the floors. It's a fun hidden detail that you could definitely miss if you don't look down, or if there's a lot of people in the waiting area. The bears sure know how to make their mark. Now speaking of the bears, one of the most iconic characters is Big Al. <laughs> and he was actually modeled after an Imagineer. Albertino was a show writer for many Disney attractions, including the Country Bear Jamboree. And Big Al was modeled after Albertino, name and all. When you look at both Al's, the resemblance is uncanny. Bertino passed away in 1996, so Big Al at the Country Bear Jamboree will forever be a reminder of this legendary Imagineer. Number 4. As you step further into Frontierland, it's hard to miss the 197-foot butte that's home to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. After you've taken a spin on the wildest ride in the wilderness, you're going to want to keep your eyes peeled for a little hidden secret at the ride's exit. Now we've all heard about hidden Mickeys by now, and if you haven't, well we have an entire video explaining the phenomena. But have you ever heard of a hidden Tinkerbell? Well, there's one at Big Thunder Mountain. As you exit the ride, there's these set of rocks on the left-hand side. They look like ordinary rocks with nothing to hide. So if you look right here in the center, there's what appears to be a crack in the rock. But when we switch to this angle directly in front, you can see it's a side profile of a silhouette of Tinkerbell. There is no real explanation why this Fantasyland character is hidden in the world of cowboys and fur traders, but with some faith, trust, and pixie dust, anything can make sense at Magic Kingdom. Number 3. There's nothing quite like the feeling of plunging down Chickapin Hill on Splash Mountain. The ride takes you into the world of the Br'er characters, as Br'er Rabbit tries to find his laughing place. In one of the first indoor show scenes on the ride, you see Br'er Rabbit leaving his home. It looks small and quaint, perfect for Br'er Rabbit. Throughout the attraction, Br'er Rabbit then realizes he wasn't cut out for his adventure and in the very last scene, he returns home. Now have you ever thought about what Br'er Rabbit's house would look like inside? Well if you ever have, then the answer sits hidden in Frontierland. As you exit Splash Mountain, on the right hand side, there's the Briar Patch gift shop. Inside, there's an abundant amount of Splash Mountain merchandise, but at the back of the shop, hidden on the upper portion of the wall illuminated by these blue lights, sits Br'er Rabbit's house. On the left hand side, there's what looks to be his dining room nicely decorated with some flowers on the table. Then to the right, there's his bedroom that has everything from a bed and a rocking chair with a mini plush toy to an armoire. You can really imagine a little Br'er Rabbit hopping through this space just going about his daily business. It's a really fun hidden secret that many people miss, especially considering where it's placed in the shop. So next time you're on Splash Mountain and see Br'er Rabbit standing outside his house, you know exactly what he's leaving behind inside. Number 2 One of the most famous frontiersmen is Davy Crockett. Davey! Davy Crockett is an American folk hero that dates all the way back to the late 1700s, and in the 1950s, Disney released a Davy Crockett miniseries. This series heavily inspired the creation of Frontierland at Disneyland, and the character also went on to inspire Magic Kingdom's Frontierland. 
From 1971 until 1994, you were able to paddle along the rivers of America on the Davy Crockett canoes. The footage you see here is taken from Disneyland, where the canoes still operate today. Even though this is now an extinct attraction at Magic Kingdom, there are still references left that pay tribute to the King of the Wild Frontier. Now, Davy Crockett is known for wearing his tan buckskin hunting suit with the iconic coonskin hat. If we take a look at the Frontier Trading Post, placed above, you'll notice some clothes on a clothesline. This tan buckskin suit could very well belong to Davy Crockett, and there also appears to be some boots placed on the right-hand side. Now, there's no way to know if any of these actually belong to Davy Crockett, but he definitely left behind some other belongings that are hidden in Peckle Bill's Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. Peckle's Bill is a character featured in the 1948 film Melody Time. The restaurant's backstory is that every time a friend visited Peckle's, they left something behind to remember them by. Well, naturally, Davy Crockett visited Peckle's Bill, and here in this little section hidden on the back wall of the restaurant, you'll find items that belong to Davy Crockett. He left behind his leather bag, powder horn, and the iconic coon skin hat. So next time you're grabbing a bite at Peco Bill's Tall Tale Inn and Cafe, keep an eye out for these Davy Crockett items hidden right in the restaurant. Number 1 So we've talked about a hidden Tinkerbell, but what about a hidden Walt Disney? Now, although Disneyland in California has many direct references to Walt Disney himself, Magic Kingdom in Florida doesn't have as many since it was built after Walt passed away. He didn't personally touch the park in the same way that he did with Disneyland. But on Tom Sawyer Island, there's one secret that pays tribute to Walt Disney, and you need to look really hard to spot it. At the back of the island, you'll find Fort Langhorn, which originally opened as Fort Sam Clemens. It was changed in 1997. The fort's a fun section on the island with many places to climb and explore, one being the escape tunnel. Once you're inside this dimly lit corridor, it's a lot of fun to walk through. And when you reach the light at the end of the tunnel, well, this is where you'll find a hidden Walt Disney. Do you see it? Yeah, that's a W and a D, Walt Disney's initials. Now, obviously, Walt Disney himself didn't engrave the initials since he had already passed away before the island was even built. But there is some Imagineer out there that hid this at the end of the escape tunnel as a hidden tribute to the man responsible for all the Disney magic. So, have you ever noticed any of these hidden secrets and details in Frontierland? What's your favorite hidden detail at the park? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. If you have any videos from the Disney parks that you'd like to share with us to be used in future videos, Follow the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Click the TPM icon on the screen to subscribe to this channel and check out some of these other videos which we're sure you'll like.